Thank you very much indeed, Alexander. That's uh, very uh, kind of you with the introduction and those kind words as well to uh, present me uh, here and to speak a little bit about uh, platform, the platform economy. It's a word and a term that's used increasingly, um, but with different meanings for uh, different individuals. Um, Therefore, I'd like to sort of give a little bit of background about uh, what we're talking about, a few definitions, and also some uh, uh, policy options and some of the implications and recommendations that we'll be following too. Much is really said and written about the platform economy. Um, there's a lot of reports and lots of studies that are highlighting that the majority of jobs will be freelance and platform based within a few years across the private process region. Um, and in this presentation, we would therefore like to look at the context, um, some of the policy options, as well as what are the implications of this and what are the potential recommendations that we could provide to this as well. So to begin by looking at what the uh, um, platform economy is, we should also be underlining that migrants make up a large percentage of the workers in this sector in a lot of uh, countries, third country nationals cannot get locked in a technology facilitated uh, parallel economy which leads to um, unstable incomes limited training and social isolation and the, the covid 19 crisis has led to rising unemployment and the recovery is likely to be characterized by increased labor market flexibility significant demand uh, remains in many sectors both low and high skilled workers um, and the platform economy can help in turning black jobs white, bringing them into the, into the regular space, and also integrating migrants into host country labor forces. So work permits should therefore be looked at and granted to migrants where jobs are needed, while efforts should also be made by all stakeholders to build trust in the platform economy through collaboration, and the establishment of a code of conduct. And I shall take these points in turn. We should start by specifying what the platform economy is, um, what the role that is played by digitalization in this, and the increased flexibility that is being demanded by both employers and workers. And we should also look at the result, which is increased instability, and the fact that it is migrants who are most often impacted by this. So to begin by saying a little bit about what the platform economy is, it's first really important to specify that um, th there's a, a great deal of confusion. And in its broadest term, the platform economy can be defined as economic activity facilitated by technology. Yet, since we have the internet, mobile connections, most jobs today have a digital element so this can be often a little bit too vague so to go further the platform economy can be described as the digital marketplaces and the digital platforms which allow people to buy sell and share goods and services and such platforms link supply and demand so for example consumers wanting food delivered to their home or office can be connected with restaurants and delivery drivers uh, via an app and a website connection. And similarly, people wanting their grass cut or their dog walked or a car to drive them uh, uh, on holiday or into town can be connected with people or companies who are willing to supply these services over a platform. And in turn, these platforms like uh, Upwork, Uber, Yandex Taxi, Food Panda, for example, they take a fee or a share of the money earned in each of these transactions. And research states that the uh, majority of these jobs will be freelance. So in this sense, independent people hired to work for different companies on particular, very concrete, very specialized, specific assignments and based around platform economy work uh, over the next 10 years. So this means, at the same time, the traditional relationship whereby an employee pays, uh, an employer pays an employee an amount of money in exchange for an exclusive agreement to work 
nine to five, uh, five days a week. This is changing because both workers and companies are starting to want more flexibility. And this is something that started even before the COVID-19 um, pandemic, which of course changed the world of work uh, increasingly. Individuals want to have more choice in when to work, uh, where to work, while combining different roles, both in terms of different jobs, but also uh, balancing work and life priorities. And simultaneously, employers, they want to hire the specific skills that they need when they need them, rather than having a sort of a large generalist workforce. And platforms and apps are therefore growing in popularity to bring employers and employees together. This is particularly relevant from a migration perspective since platforms are increasingly used as a way for migrants to enter the labor market and also broader society. And there is a direct link between the rise of the platform economy and traditional employment became, becoming kind of more difficult for migrants to enter in destination countries. And this can often, uh, uh, the result of this can be seen in, for example, Polish plumbers and handymen making money through apps in Western Europe, to the Uzbeks driving cars for ride hailing platforms in Russia, for example. Um, so what is the role of digitalization also in all of this? Um, I think it's important to underline that digitalization and globalization um, <clears throat> are crucial for the platform economy and have contributed to new ways of working and have altered the shape of the labor market. And equally, they have affected how we buy, sell, and share goods. Um, where we once used to sort of be happy with putting a classified advert in a newspaper or a, uh, a card in a shop window, uh, we can now reach a much larger audience through digital means. Um, and this is facilitated by the fact of uh, you know, almost 90% of the European Union population have access to the internet while you know, figures in Russia, it's about 80% and about 75% in Kazakhstan. Um, and people can actually reach this larger audience for a fraction of the price too. Much simpler, much cheaper, much easier. And both new and traditional service providers can use platforms to create fresh demand as well as reach new customers. And most people across the Prague process region also feel that technology is having a positive impact in this regard. Uh, the majority of uh, citizens feel that technology has had an overwhelmingly positive effect on the economy, also on society, and also on the overall quality of their lives. And the platform economy is having this impact on society by affecting the world of work, as well as how we buy, sell uh, things and services. But often the legislation, um, the rules and practices are struggling to keep up because often these are geared towards a traditional relationship between an employer and employee, as well as buyers and sellers having a very traditional, very direct relationship. And as a result, current laws can often create barriers and prevent the development of the sector while failing to provide the necessary protection for workers and individuals. So workers in the platform economy can often find themselves uh, um, they can also find themselves kind of in a, in, a, in, a, in a place where they don't maybe have the uh, necessary protection. Um, they maybe don't have the uh, social safety net of a regular job. And platform companies often state that they're not em employers. They want to have their hands off this, um, but rather classify themselves as a technology provider who should not assume any rights or responsibilities towards the uh, uh, plat platform workers. Um, and I think it's also um, uh, vital um, within this that we, uh, um, we, should, we should think that this is not seen as something that is uh, in, in, in some way sort of a, a lesser, uh, lesser grade. Um, and there should be no sort of parallel economy or something shady whereby rules um, you know, are needed to make sure that people are paying taxes, consumer protection is upheld, and that employment conditions are fair. Um, and in countries where technology usage and digitalization are high, uh, for example, countries like uh, uh, the Nordics or Estonia, adaptions are being made and policy is being updated to meet this new reality. And this takes the form of things like uh, electronic invoicing, 
declaring tax electronically and payments being made and allowed of e-platforms, uh, for example. Um, in countries where this is not the case, um, workers and citizens are at a disadvantage. And simplifications facilitated by technology uh, and digitalization are extremely relevant for migrants since they uh, often re represent the elements of society who are most at risk. And globalization, technology advances, and the shifting norms and values are shaping the way we work. And this kind of task-based employment access through uh, websites and apps such as Uber, uh, Bolt, Yandex, uh, Bytaxi, Fedora, are used by more and more migrants to earn money. But the platform economy can be a, a kind of a double-edged sword for many migrants, though. They offer a quick pathway to self-sufficiency, yet come with risks of unstable income, limited training, and social isolation, all of which could hinder the overall integration process in their destination country. So to say a little bit more about this increased flexibility uh, and instability, the two which go hand in hand, a growing number of firms now rely on this pool of external service providers who are available 24-7 uh, uh, to top up either their own workforce or provide a complete workforce at peak, peak periods or to bring in missing expertise for a limited period of time. And the employment market of today is becoming more and more reliant on these platform economy workers, um, individuals who rely on internet-enabled platforms for, to find these one-off tasks too. And this can be everything from translation services to delivering food and also construction work uh, and ride-hailing uh, services, for example. So also to look at some of the some of the uh, the, the research um, around 40 percent of uh, executives across the pride process region expect to employ more freelancers than workers on a fixed uh, term contract over the next five years and furthermore 50 percent of business leaders think that the corporate adoption of platforms to find workers would be a good thing the covid 19 uh, crisis has reinforced this development um, you know, it, it wouldn't be uh, out of order to say we've almost come five years in five months in terms of labor market uh, uh, developments. Um, and also within this kind of 50% of business leaders think that the corporate adoption of platforms to find workers will be a good thing. Um, and really, I think that, you know, the, 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 the similar change we've seen in previous economic downturns as well, the number of freelancers and the size of the platform economy has increased as a result of every economic crisis since 1991. Um, it would be good to move from this kind of background that we've provided now to look at some of the uh, options available to uh, governments and uh, decision makers and opinion formers. Because integrating migrants and facilitating their entry into employment, uh, in particular, through the platform economy, could be an important focus for uh, policymakers across the Prague process region. Migrants are finding it increasingly difficult to uh, enter these labor markets in destination countries, as we uh, highlighted before. And there is the hope that technology will make it easier for them to find jobs. Technology platforms make it simpler for migrants to be able to match their skills with the shortages that actually exist in the destination countries. Uh, and this will help uh, third country nationals already in destination countries. But it should be underlined that would-be migrants uh, need the uh, work permits that will allow them to enter destination countries where labor shortages in specific sectors do actually exist. And as such, the benefits for would-be migrants are more limited, maybe in the short run. But over the longer term, however, technology and platform economy will probably highlight some of the uh, skills shortages more easily, uh, show where these exist. And national governments and destination countries are therefore likely to facilitate uh, migration to meet companies' labor shortfalls, uh, particularly if the local population cannot or does not want to fill these vacancies. And economic growth will depend on increased migration under these kind of circumstances. Um, but an enduring problem across the uh, uh, prior process region is that employers are looking for specific people with a specific particular background uh, and this often includes qualifications and training 
Um, employers know that employees who have come through a local or a national system have an education, professional skills, and an all-round experience that they can utilize. So a, um, a German uh, manufacturer of automotive parts, for example, knows that they will, what they will get if they employ a German apprentice who has been trained and uh, has gone through the uh, national system uh, when they arrive. However, when a potential uh, employee comes from, uh, uh, from uh, another country within the European Union or from outside the EU, Serbia, Turkmenistan, uh, for example, and their skills, education and knowledge are known or not recognized in the destination country, then the willingness to offer employment is significantly reduced. Um, and when this is combined with limited language and cultural knowledge, uh, the situation is made worse. And these strict labor laws also make it more difficult for migrants since employers do not want to be stuck with the wrong worker that they subsequently cannot get rid of in a very strict, very, uh, uh, very, very rigid labor market situation, which we see in countries across uh, the Prague process region. And since the coronavirus uh, pandemic has amplified many of these issues and the, uh, and the resulting unemployment means that currently there are more workers, uh, both local workers, non-local workers, and third country nationals to choose from, it's kind of that the platform economy should be supported as a legitimate vehicle through which migrants can find sources of income and make money to support themselves and their families. And as we kind of alluded to before, demand is still strong in a number of sectors, uh, including technology services, programming, website development and e-commerce, engineering, at the high skilled uh, end of the labor spectrum. And even when we look at the lower skilled uh, jobs, medical support, the care sector, deliveries, um, these are sectors that are still growing. Uh, and, uh, you know, for example, the demand for food deliveries is set to increase over the next three years by at least 15% across the prior process region, according to most uh, 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 reports and uh, analysis. So, is the platform economy a force for good or a force for bad? Um, some feel that the platform economy is fantastic because it allows immigrants, whether they're third country nationals or uh, European citizens moving to another uh, member state to arrive in a country, uh, begin earning money and working almost immediately. But on the other hand, there is a concern held by some that the platform economy leads to more vulnerability with long hours, no job security, and kind of weak ties to social welfare systems. Currently, platform economy workers often fall outside national laws and social safety nets in many countries because platform economies are not, uh, platform economy companies are not classed as employers and therefore the normal labor uh, market rules do not apply. Um, to give an example, food delivery companies want, uh, often want platform workers to buy their own bike or buy their own moped, uh, fix their own insurance and sort out their own taxes. And often companies do not want to bring, uh, to help people too much because by helping with their tax declarations, social security information, sick payments, holiday days, uh, providing training, for example, and clothing, um, they, they, they have a fear that they, this will make them seem de facto as an employer um, and therefore uh, providing services associated with those of an employer. And this kind of creates a catch-22 situation. Um, classifying many of these platform companies like a Deliveroo or an Uber as employers would also mean them accepting extra costs uh, and in some cases making their business model uh, unprofitable. But since ride hailing and delivery companies want to be uh, uh, seen as technology platforms and not an employer, there are a number of gray areas, uh, kind of who's, who, who's responsible if there is an accident. Uh, is this the platform or the third party who's actually asking for the service over the platform? Um, and also what happens if the, pl the, the platform worker gets sick? At present, the platform uh, company has no responsibility uh, in many markets. And what about pension contributions? What about severance pay? Again, the platform uh, company uh, has no or very little responsibilities in most cases. So at worst, the platform economy could, could kind of push migrants further 
out towards the fringes of society um, and the fringes of economic activity and stripped of labor rights and social protection uh, while unable to gain more skills, uh, locked out of social capital, they would make the ideal scapegoat for social tensions around growing inequalities in society. But at best, of course, the platform economy could help migrants struggling to find a way into the highly regulated world of traditional employment in many destination countries. These migrants could uh, download an app, sign up, answer a few qualification questions and, and, and start accepting jobs almost immediately. Uh, and this, of course, would allow them, uh, um, and also nationals if they choose, so choose, to enjoy flexibility, autonomy, and connect with a transnational uh, client base in some cases, provided, of course, they have the necessary digital and uh, uh, entrepreneurial skills. And this would also mean that they start earning money uh, and, of course, do not need to um, uh, take state benefits or touch any allowances uh, at the same time. So is the platform economy something to be supported then? Um, if we look to the European Union level, look, the European Commission issued a communication back in 2016 called a, uh, a European Agenda for the Collaborative Economy. Um, and uh, this, is a, this is a term, collaborative economy is used interchangeably with the, the platform uh, economy in the, in, in the context of this communication. Um, and it was seen as a way of looking to offer and use products and services through online platforms, provide new opportunities for everyone, as well as offer more creative and entrepreneurial people the opportunity to develop new business models. And back in 2018, we, we, we see the results of a Eurobarometer poll that showed that more than half of all EU citizens knew about the platform and collaborative economy, um, with, with one in four already a user. And we've seen this increase uh, rapidly, uh, particularly with the onset of the uh, coronavirus, where people are uh, more likely and have been more likely to order food out, not take public transport, uh, but maybe sort of order a, uh, a, a, a ride hailing service or use an electric scooter instead. A lot of these things that, are, that, that have gone up. Um, and popular platforms, we see Uber, Yandex, by taxi, by taxi across, the, uh, across the region who are uh, uh, doing very well. But it's interesting that among the people who have used this for sort of buying and selling uh, um, uh, goods, very few have actually used services to offer platforms at the moment. Um, Eurobarometer found that nearly nine out of 10 people uh, would, uh, would recommend platforms, um, but only 6% of Europeans have actually offered services over a platform. Uh, and this is, think, is again, as we, we talked about in terms of the background, something that is increasing and will increase exponentially uh, over the next months and years. Um, it's not, at the moment, there's something that's maybe the most natural for people in the Prague process region. Um, uh, Still at present, most people uh, prefer traditional methods of employment and working for a single uh, employer on a, on a traditional fixed contract basis. Um, but this also shows the potential scope for development and growth. Um, younger people in particular are more, much more attracted than older people to the opportunities presented by the platform economy. And this is what we see out of statistics and analysis uh, that's come forward. And even um, uh, also in a, uh, a study uh, that shows that uh, Russians born after 1980 value experiences, mobility and self-expression more highly than uh, status and consumption. And this is also reflected in their uh, increased favorability towards accepting platform economy uh, work. And at the same time, we should also underline in the European context that while the platform economy should have encouraged, the European Commission has underlined that the, uh, uh, the most important issues to focus on um, uh, market access requirements, consumer protection, liability, trust in the new services, and also labor law and taxation questions. So what are the conditions of the workers in the uh, platform economy? Um, while supportive of the platform economy and the opportunities it creates, many legislators are mindful uh, that with the new forms of work must come modern and improved forms of protection, 
including for those uh, working via online platforms. And within this, uh, with this in mind, the European Commission is planning to launch a new initiative on improving the working conditions for platform workers specifically. And this was mentioned in the European uh, Commission communication uh, that came out in March, just before the onset of the coronavirus uh, pandemic, um, in uh, the communication entitled A New Industrial Strategy for Europe. And also many other countries are looking at the platform kind of economy from a similar standpoint and doing so will have a significant impact on migrants uh, given their uh, uh, part and their, their, their role here. It is also in parallel to this we should we should say that the European Commission has proposed a reform initiative for an EU minimum wage uh, and the aim is that all that by 2024 all workers in the EU will should be able to earn a fair and adequate wage no matter where they live in the EU and this is something that will impact the platform economy and uh, migrant workers too. So moving on to look at the, uh, the, uh, the, this, the, the role of the platform economy in making black jobs white, at present there are a number of, uh, uh, of roles from kind of cleaning to uh, building work to babysitting, uh, gardening, uh, which are paid with black money and are part of the shadow economy. And this means that workers do not have any uh, social uh, provisions, sick pay or pension cover. And it also means that um, money does not enter state budgets to pay for schools and hospitals. And rather than being seen as perpetuating this reality, the companies operating within the platform economy can actually uh, uh, address these concerns. Um, some uh, countries have, all, have already introduced uh, schemes uh, designed to uh, make certain types of jobs like building and cleaning work, for example, legal and bring these jobs out of the shadow economy and provide workers with a uh, safety net. Some examples uh, in Sweden, a person who hires someone to do sort of repairs or uh, 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 cleaning, laundry, may get a, a tax reduction in the form of a uh, 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 reduction from the labor costs. Uh, and in Belgium, in the, in the regions, individuals can pay for uh, uh, washing, ironing, cleaning services, for example, by a Titel Service, uh, which are subsidized by the government. Uh, and provide decent working conditions for employees uh, in the form of holiday pay, social insurance cover, for example. And moreover, activities closely related to the um, domestic or private sphere um, um, were often sort of paid in cash and undeclared, but the marketization of such work through digital marketplaces, however, means much more traceability. Uh, because uh, digital platforms are often facilitated by electronic payment systems uh, and this increases the opportunity to bring uh, undeclared work out of the, the shadow economy and make sure there's much more of a record uh, uh, of what's actually taking place. Um, but will the current climate in the, uh, the COVID-19 world mean that there will be a push to reduce or stop uh, migration? Um, because kind of at the other end of the spectrum to facilitate in the platform economy is the option available to politicians and decision makers to decide that COVID-19 has created such instability and unemployment locally that all immigration should be reduced or stopped completely. And while this will be limiting for countries really on uh, economic, social and political grounds, it is a view that is growing in popularity in many quarters and some feel that since there are huge numbers of high skilled and low skilled workers looking for jobs, uh, then locals should be prioritized. So it's kind of a situation that the uh, migrants being an integral part of economic growth in the good times are now seen as an inconvenient problem for many destination uh, and also uh, transit countries. So the, the coronavirus crisis has made it very easy as well for countries to close borders uh, uh, and stop movements. And this trend could be extended well beyond the life of the current pandemic. Could also see politicians and companies focusing on employing nationals, investing more in uh, uh, training schemes for nationals, but also at the same time investing more in machines, uh, automation to carry out low skill jobs over the medium term. While the, um, while the situation is, uh, uh, is uh, evolving, 
all the time and it's expanding at a significant rate. Uh, we see that animal growth rates stand at 20% to, uh, in Europe at the moment. And the, the platform economies is expected to be worth over $330 billion by uh, 2025. And because of this, it's therefore advisable for governments to control it, utilize it, uh, and kind of grasp the platform economy as a catalyst for opportunity, uh, an opportunity for uh, jobs and also growth. And in times of economic instability following the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the platform economy should be harnessed as part of the solution rather than being demonized as part of the problem. So what pro policies can promote the platform economy but ensure that it benefits the wider society as well as the migrants themselves? Um, we would suggest um, providing work permits to migrants, ensuring the same rules apply to platform economy as well as the regular economy, and also promoting initiatives to build trust. So I'll just say a few words about these uh, ones in turn, beginning with the provision of uh, uh, work permits and also a safety net. Because governments should ensure that migrants kind of receive um, work permits with minimal red tape where there is uh, uh, a need and allow them to work in the platform economy uh, in destination countries. And this should apply to third country nationals and apply uh, to permit them to work in a platform economy while meeting the needs of uh, employers and the local uh, uh, labor and business market. And these work permits should be not based on a system of quotas, but rather on the economic need in the relevant country. And although uh, politically sensitive in many countries, offering unemployment insurance for migrants would be helpful. And this would allow migrants to cover very basic living costs if they're between jobs. And in addition, guaranteeing access to healthcare and education, which is seen as being uh, critical to allowing uh, migrant, migrant parents to work while their ch children are taken care of, uh, fed, and enter into the uh, education system. A common concern expressed across the Prague process region is that new opportunities for migrants necessarily mean a negative impact for local workers. And despite the fact that the rhetoric is popular across a number of countries, research actually shows that the evidence of migrants negatively affecting natives' employment chances is extremely weak. One of the reasons is that foreigners and uh, locals usually bring different skills to the labor market. Um, migrants can often spot new niches, new opportunities that the established labor market uh, hasn't come across. And in many cases, migrants want or are prepared to do the jobs that the local population don't want to do or are not interested in. So the platforms and the platform economy merely provide the opportunity for workers to find employment more quickly and often more efficiently. Economists and re researchers have clearly demonstrated that migrants can provide significant growth opportunities for host countries. And with the platform economy bringing about rapid changes to labor markets, policymakers uh, have a, 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 an opportunity to think differently in order to take full advantage of these. And secondly, I talked about the, the fact that the same rules should apply. The platform economy needs to follow the same rules of the game as the regular economy. This entails taking on the same rights, rules, and responsibilities for paying tax to making social contributions and providing good employment conditions. Where platforms are providing jobs, uh, supplying uniforms, paying benefits, then they should be classified and treated as an employer. Uh, they should not be allowed to hide behind the claim that they're just a technology company, just a facilitator uh, in an attempt to avoid their responsibilities. However, where platforms are simply providing a digital marketplace, um, then this functional connection should be seen for what it is. But countries need to be firm and establish that the platform economy needs to be treated in the same way and ensure a level playing field for employers and employees. Um, and also to get rid of this uncertainty because it's often migrants who are put in these precarious or negative situations. And thirdly, there's the, uh, the, the importance to build trust in order to address the knowledge, trust and perception deficit which currently exists in uh, many countries today about the platform economy. It will be important for the legitimate actors in the sector to cooperate with national public authorities, uh, tax authority, employment agency, trade unions, 
uh, as well as politicians at the local and national uh, levels. And together, they should develop uh, codes of conduct, recovering, covering the uh, workers' rights and working conditions, as well as taxation and administrative matters. And this is something that needs to be done in collaboration. Um, such a charter could be tailored to the needs of the national market and kind of be acting as a trust mark for people who to meet the required standards. And this would increase migrants' trust in the platform economy uh, as well as the businesses and consumers in the local market. So it's good for business by building this trust and making steps to make this happen. And information and training sessions could also be arranged in order to help educate migrant workers as well as employees. And of course, this uh, code of conduct needs to be independently audited on a regular basis to ensure and inspire confidence by all res respected parties. And operators who do not meet the desired standards should be sanctioned and even have their accreditation removed and be barred from the scheme if they fail to address shortcomings within a uh, appropriate uh, f time frame. So that's a little bit uh, about some of the, uh, the, the three areas we think could be, could be important to, 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 to look at. And to really sort of summarize, the platform economy offers these new routes for migrants to enter labor markets in destination countries, while also lowering the barriers to entry and offering them more flexibility. And this is something that should be facilitated by governments and policymakers, since there is a need and demand which will likely increase after the COVID-19 crisis uh, passes, and a crisis which has brought more, many of these issues into the fore uh, much more quickly than maybe that would have happened normally. And at the same time, legislators need to ensure that migrants are protected from a uh, precarious existence characterized by limited rights, uh, volatile incomes, and no social security or safety net. If not, migrants will remain on the fringes of society uh, with little chance of entering the regular uh, economy. And this is something that all uh, different stakeholders need to work towards to avoid. So I have just about kept to my time. Um, thank you for listening. And I really invite your uh, questions, 